Welcome to today's session. Today we will be talking about one of the most interesting topics in geomorphology, that is the fluvial landforms. Now, before we start with the fluvial landforms, the erosion and the depositional features, we must be able to understand the basics on how a river works, what are the main components of river, and what are the main processes that we need to understand. So, before we start, here is a basic diagram of a river and what is a watershed or a drainage basin. So this area which shows in a dotted line depicts the watershed. A watershed or a drainage basin is a region which is drained by the complete stream. So if I say this is the first river which originates from here. So this would be the source of the river. All the streams that combine together to form the main river are known as tributaries. So all of these rivers join together into the main stream and this would be the main stream of the river. So we say this is the main river channel and this finally drops out or empties into a ocean body or a lake body. This place where they meet is known as the mouth of the river. All the rivers which join together at certain point, the point which at which they join is known as the point of confluence. So you have the rivers starting here. These are all the tributaries. These tributaries meet into the main channel and this main channel finally empties into a main water body. Sometimes when the river is flowing through, it tries to separate out into different streams by the time it reaches the main stream. So rather than joining directly, it joins in this fashion into the main, river, main water body. So the point where they start to differentiate is known as distributaries. And the complete area which is covered under the streams of one river are, is known as the drainage basin or the watershed. Now every stream that joins into the, another stream is given a number which is known as the stream order. This stream order is also known as the stroller number after the name of the person who discovered this concept. So it's also known as the stroller number or the stream order. Now what is the basis of stream order and why do we need to study it? So a stream order helps you explain the relative size of any stream or any water channel that is flowing through. Now, nearly 70 to 80 percent of the streams of the world are either first order or second order streams. So, first order is the smallest order and second order is a higher order. We usually say it goes from first order to twelfth order and the magnitude of the twelfth order is found in Amazon River, South America. Now, what is first order or the second order stream? So first order is the primary stream that originates which has no tributaries or no smaller rivers than that. So when two first order streams meet, <coughs> it forms a second order stream. So you have first order and first order combining to form the second order stream. Now again, as you can see here, there are two first order streams coming in to form a second order stream. When there are two second order streams, so these two are second order streams, it means to form a third order stream. Now, if there is another first order stream which is joining into a third order stream, it won't change the stream number. So, a stream order would change only when two streams of equal magnitude or equal size will uh, have a confluence. Then only you can have a stream order which is higher than the previous order. So as the stream order increases, the size of the river, the flow of the river increases. So I can say for a first order stream, say for let's example, this is the width of the river. For the second order, the width might increase to this. And for the third order, the width might further increase to this. So as you move down and as the stream order increases, the size of the width of the river increases. 
also the adjacent canopy would increase. Now as we can see, this is a third order stream and this is a third order stream. These two third order streams would join together to form a final stream which is of a fourth order stream. So fourth order stream would be much much bigger as compared to the first and the second order streams. So this was something, uh, the very basics or the very fundamentals of a river, the components of a river, the stream order or the struggle number. Now we will be talking about the river processes in today's class. Now what are the various river processes? If we understand, if we try to understand a river process into a very simple terms, we can say it works like a development of human being. So from a childhood to adulthood to a kind of old age, the hierarchy I am trying to explain the age hierarchy here. So here there is a child, then a youth and then a, uh, the adolescence and the youth stage and finally an old age stage. Similarly, in case of the river, same thing happens which is very much similar to this. So it is the youth or the lower course of the river. Then you have the mature stage and finally the old stage of the river. Now how the things change? from a youth stage to an old stage. When the river is in its youth stage, we can say it originates from glaciers. So let's say uh, we take an example of river Ganga. It originates from the Gotri. So the origin from where the river is originating would be a youthful stage and finally draining into Bay of Bengal. So the point where it is draining out would be a phase of old age or a uh, final stage I should say. So the initial stage where you, have, where you find the river originating from Gangotri, you would have a kind of features which would be much more turbulent in nature. So erosion would be predominant in the youthful stage. In the mature stage or the adulthood stage I would say a transportation is a predominant phenomenon. And finally in the old stages of the river where it joins to form the delta or drains into the main river, ocean body, it would be deposition which would be the primary factor. So we will start with the first factor that is erosion. Now process of erosion can be simply understood by a very simple mnemonic, easy to remember and that is CASH or CASH. Now an interesting way to remember is C stands for corrosion. A stands for attrition, S stands for solution and H stands for hydraulic action. Now let's understand these four terms. First is corrosion or which is also known as abrasion. What happens is this is the main wall or the main bedrock. You have small particles that are colliding from the river to the adjacent parts or the adjacent landmass. So this particle would collide with the main body here and it would fragment out into smaller pieces. So that is what is known as the process of corrosion or abrasion. It is also known as the process of abrasion. So important thing to remember here is in the spelling of corrosion you have A and that A leads to abrasion here. So it is an easy way to understand and remember that corrosion and abrasion are the same things. Then the next phenomena is attrition. Now I have two small particles here. Under attrition what would happen is these two small particles will collide together and they would further fragment out into much smaller particles. So you have two particles which are here. They tend to collide with one another and these two particles will break down into particles of much smaller size. So that is what is known as the process of attrition. Corrosion or solution is a unique phenomenon which is whereby you have particles that kind of dissolve in the water and flow with the water. So it is basically a kind of acidic solution that is formed and it becomes dissolved into the main water. And finally you have the hydraulic action. Hydraulic action is the action of the water that is flowing through. So if you have a if you have a kind of bedrock here with some space or some kind of joints here, this water would percolate into here 
and this will kind of break up into two. Okay. So this would be a kind of hydraulic action which is governed by the process of water. The water runs into the small cavity and tends to break out the rock into much smaller parts. So that is what is the process of erosion. Once the particles are broken down into smaller units, they kind of tend to move away with the water. That process is known as process of transportation. Now in the process of transportation again, you have four methods by which water partic uh, particles in the water can be transported. The first is the solution as we have already discussed in the process of corrosion. This particle kinds of dissolve into the water and they move with the flow of water. So once they are dissolved in the stages of erosion, in the process of transportation, they move with the water or kind of flow with the flow, they move with the flow of water. The next is suspension. Suspension includes very small particles of the size of kind of clay or fine silt as I should say. So these fine set of clay particles, what they do is, they kind of suspend uh, into the water body and they move with the flow of water. The next is traction. Traction also forms the bed load or the traction load of the river. They are formed along the river bed or the base of the river. They are huge boulders or huge particles which kind of settle down to the bottom of the ocean or the water body and they roll at the surface of the water. The next is saltation. Saltation includes bit smaller particles as compared to the process of traction or the particles in traction. So these small particles rather than rolling onto the surface of the bedrock, they try to form a leapfrog motion or jump into from one point to another. So that's a kind of jumping motion that occurs in the process of saltation. So these four processes are understood in the stages of transportation and that occurs during the mature stage or the middle stage of the river. So as I said we took the example of river Ganga originating from Gangotri glacier. So when it originates from the glacier you have large load of sediment that kind of erodes or break down that helps to form numerous landforms. For example, at the top you can see where the river originates, you will have erosional landforms like V-shaped valley. That V-shaped valley will further, further deeper down and form the canyons and the gorges. By, by the transport, you form the meanders or the kind of meandering river pattern. And finally, there would be the stage of deposition or the old age stage where the particles deposit down in the stages of uh, like sediment, uh, sediment deposition like delta. Okay. So that would be the final stage on the upper course of the river, uh, sorry the lower course of the river where you have the deposition of the particles. Now there is a very important concept behind understanding the river processes and this concept is known as Jostrom curve. Now what is this Jostrom curve? It helps you to explain how the velocity affects the competence of a river. Okay. So this graph is velocity versus the particle size. So as you can see the particle size in, is increasing in this direction and you have velocity increasing in this direction. Now what would happen if there are smaller particles it would be easier for them to deposit down and break down. While if the particle size is very big, what would happen is the erosion would become difficult. So there are few terms which we need to understand before we understand this curve. First is competence. What is competence? Competence is the maximum load that a river can take. Okay. So it's known as competence. Now what is capacity? Capacity is a total load that a river can have. Now based on these two concepts we can understand under this velocity versus the particle size 
curve, we are trying to understand how the process of erosion, deposition and transportation occurs. So this curve helps you decide which particles will kind of erode, which particles will kind of transport and which particles will settle down into a region. So this curve or the upper curve is the curve of critical minimum velocity. So what happens is, uh, we can say it's a critical erosion curve. So what happens here is, is the minimum velocity that is required to lift any particle up. Okay, so that would be under the concept of erosion. So this curve here would be known as the critical erosion curve. And this sign here would be the critical deposition curve. Now what does this critical deposition curve mean? Critical deposition curve is the maximum velocity at which any flow, uh, at which the particles could be deposited at a particular flow. Now what happens basically is, the particle which are smaller in size will kind of erode. It would be easier to erode them than transporting them. Okay. So the particles which get larger and larger, it becomes difficult for them uh, to move them so a higher a bigger size of the particle would require higher velocity to transport that way uh, that particle so as we have talked about the various stages here is a brief recap of what we have done so you have the early stage the mature stage and the older stage so the early stage as we said is the youthful stage of the upper course of the river the main landforms would be gorges, waterfalls, river catches, mainly goes through the erosion. As we can see here, the flow of the river is steep, it slowly tapers down and finally towards the older age or the lower course, it is kind of deposition, alluvial deposition that is predominant. The slope becomes very gentle and the river basin becomes very wide. In contrast to the erosional processes where you have the V-shaped valley, and under this V-shaped valley, what happens is it mainly deepens. So the main fundamental concept here that runs is the concept of erosion. During the middle stage or the mature stage, you have the transportation that is the primary uh, phenomena that you can see. The major features would be meanders, river cliffs, and interlocking aspers. Now the erosional landforms. The deposition landforms and the landforms formed by water, we would be covering in a separate class in detail how these landforms form and what is the basis of these landforms, whether it would be a kind of erosional landform or a depositional landform in fluvial ge uh, geomorphology. We would be also talking about the drainage patterns and how the drainage density changes. So, stay tuned for further classes in fluvial geomorphology. You can subscribe to Examinate channel for any further.